we would like to start today's video with a big thank you to our very generous patrons. We would especially like to thank some of our most recent patrons, Beastander, Commander Kukatu, Blue Knight 001 and James Monroe. Thank you for your support guys and for your patience while we work through the problems we were having between Discord and Patreon linking this month. The Beluga Liner by Sao Kruger is one of the largest ships a private commander can own before getting into fleet carrier territory and it is clear from its sleek visual aesthetic that this is a craft built for luxury and style. Basically this is a cruise ship in space and is always in the top 1% of liners out there. You may then be forgiven for thinking that the Beluga Liner would have few qualities suitable for combat, least of all against Thargoids. But the Beluga Liner may just have a few tricks to play, not least of which is the extremely generous visibility from the bridge. In a room that is probably big enough to play tennis in, the three crew seats are treated to an enormous field of vision from the extremely large canopy in front. The Beluga Liner has a relatively good pitch in your rate along with a reliable boost cycle. And while not fast, it is at least relatively consistent. The Beluga Liner has five medium hard points, with two on top of the hull and three below. The placement really limits the ship to three medium gauss if you want to maintain worthwhile convergence. The Beluga suffers due to its size. It is a very large target and loses speed quickly during orbits. This means relying on boosts and giving up optimal position often in order to keep the orbit alive. Not a problem against the weaker Thargoids where attack runs are relatively short, but against the tougher interceptors, this could be a mounting problem. The Beluga Liner is designed to transport the wealthiest in the galaxy in luxury. Let's see how it fares against the Thargoids. Despite the ship's large size and slow speed, I went into the Cyclops fight very confident of a win. Engaging the swarm in melee ranges is always my go-to strategy in large ships, and with the Beluga this is no exception. The aiming mobility makes this very comfortable to pull off. My initial build did not have optimal gauss cannon placement, so I think that would be corrected in later fights. The high inertia of the Beluga means it holds orbit momentum relatively well at high speeds, though when performing slower orbits, stalling becomes a much bigger problem. For such a large ship, heat is quite an issue though, and firing three ghost cannons does spike heat under heat sink cover. Cyclops was not much of a challenge for the Beluga, provided you can deal with swarms at close range. The Basilisk however would pose more of a threat with its higher speed and greater agility. Though having adjusted my Gauss placement, I was now able to focus more fire on hearts.
attacking runs go smoothly if you are able to keep up a rhythm and deal with the swarms efficiently. This is made tricky by the beluga's low speed, but it is manageable. The orbit stalled out quickly, as I was not moving fast enough. Having three gauss in a row like this though, means you can align them along the exerted heart. The Basilisk was a far greater challenge in the Beluga. The inability to control the time between attacking runs will always be costly for the Beluga. The Medusa I was confident would be smoother a target to take down. Tougher and more damaging than the Basilisk Yas, but not too much faster than the Beluga, allowing more time to get repairs and rearming completed between attacking runs. I attempted the lightning flyby technique after the first heart, but the beluga just did not have the speed to pull it off, and the beluga's recovery time from lightning attack can be very long, with speed extremely limited for several boosts following the attack. Again, firing all ghosts together will spike the heat, but if you can keep the beluga at high speed during orbits, then this isn't a crippling problem. Allowing your orbit speed to drop is tempting when the heart is exerted, but this will always be costly for the Beluga. It is a large target, and so dropping speed does mean losing pulse.
that it's so long as you can make the time between hearts with flybys and eliminating or avoiding the swarm, you can recover from these setbacks. Overall, the Medusa is an enjoyable, if challenging, fight for the Beluga. Mistakes are costly, but the recovery time between hearts is a lot smoother than fighting the Basilisk. Now, in the time I allotted for the review fights for the Beluga, I was unable to take down a Hydra. This kill has been completed several times in the past by some of the truly great AX pilots. I just couldn't get into a rhythm though. In my most successful attempt, I was running basic ammo as I didn't have the synth to commit anything greater to the fight. Still, even with basic ammo, I did get a fair way into the fight and got a chance to see the Beluga hold its own against the Hydra. I think that Staggerfire would be more suitable against the Hydra, who had been taking less incoming fire but also result in longer attacking runs, allowing more time for the swarm to maybe get the drop on you and get agitated. In future, I will explore using Staggered Fire instead of all Gauss at once. Still, the first heart was eliminated, albeit with a big cost to hull. The second heart was equally punishing, and without the benefit of full repairs between, as holding onto Olympia was very tricky for the Beluga when the Hydra and Swarm caught up. The heart was eliminated right at the point of a missile attack, narrowly avoided, but with ever decreasing hull and not a huge opportunity to repair, 
I could tell this would not be a successful run. This is a fight I would like to revisit in future though, much like the Viper, Vulture and Astro Explorer. I'm sure that one day this video will feature a link at the end to the actual kill. Overall, the Beluga is not particularly great for AX combat, certainly when compared to ships like the Cutter and Corvette. It is more comfortable to fly than expected, but maybe that is just par for the course as a luxury cruise vessel. The Orca and Dolphin certainly follow suit. The Beluga is capable of killing Thargoids, yes, but I cannot recommend it, even for adventure tourists seeking first-hand views of Thargoid kills. The Orca is a far, far superior vessel.